Welcome, welcome, welcome to Walking Through Glass, the podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dina C. Brown, founder of the Leadership Movement, international best-selling author, speaker, and executive coach, affectionately known to my clients as the Catalyst. Why? Because I make shift happen. My purpose in life is to inspire, empower, and transform lives. I wake each morning with the mission to help you lead with confidence, speak with influence, and connect strategically by getting out of your head so you can lead. And by lead, I mean learn, experience, apply, and develop. Walking Through Glass, the podcast, is not about breaking through the glass ceiling, but is about the struggle we face on our journey walking through the glass, the fear, anxiety, depression, imposter syndrome, limited beliefs, negative self-talk, and other BS. And by BS, again, I mean belief systems that get in the way of us living the life that we dream and desire. It is time to make the shift to clarity, confidence, and consistency. It is time for you to walk through the glass with my very special guest today, Miss Mira Revent. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this correctly, Reverente. And she is here and she has an amazing, impressive resume. But first and foremost, her work that she is doing as an event professional and event manager is really critical through these very challenging times. And although she's been the chief volunteer officer and founder for Got Volunteers, right now she's looking at, do you got events? And so without further ado, I would love to introduce my amazing guest to you for her to tell her a little bit more about who she is, what she's been working on, how she is really navigating um, this current corona crisis, and again, what you can do to walk through the glass. So, Mira, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dina. How are you? I'm fantastic. So tell us a little bit, like I said, I know I wanted to get into all of your background and all of your work. And I thought, okay, she can share some of that, but I really wanted to have the opportunity to get to, um, this is, if this isn't broken glass, I don't know what is. <laughs> yes, I know. It's a million little broken pieces right now, <laughs> if you can call it that, but it's all yeah. good. So tell us a little bit about that, because um, in your background as an event planner, manager, you know, coordinator, you've done, you know, a whole range um, of types of events. But now using that experience and using all of your, your subject matter knowledge and awareness, how do you what, what what's going on with you now? I'll just start that. Start there. Oh, um, yeah, I think this crisis just caught everybody unaware. I mean, me included. Um, we weren't planning for a, a crisis of this magnitude. And uh, as an event professional, I think I'm one of the hardest hit, if not the hardest hit. Um, it's not that bad in terms of postponements and cancellations. I've only had one event uh, postponed to September. I mostly coordinate festivals 
and um, athletic events like marathons, half marathons, 5Ks, bike rides. And most of those, the bulk of my events are in the fall and winter. So it it's still all good, except for that one event that got moved. I'm just really using this time to hunker down and uh, do research and work on all the stuff that, you know, I put off throughout the year. You know, we're all guilty of that, right? We don't work on templates as much. We don't write as much because we're always being pulled in a million different directions. You can relate, right? <laughs> yes, I can. And, and and when you're saying like, yeah, your stuff is in the fall, I actually have a conference um, coming up in the fall, the I Am Unstoppable um, conference, which is October 10th in the fall. And so those details are locked in. And although it's months down the line, there's a trickle effect is what I realized because people are moving their current events and festivals. Then some of them aren't canceling them. They are moving them to the fall now. (laughs) Yes. I was just having a conversation with a colleague about that. I said, what's going to happen? There's only so many weekends this fall, right? Mm -hmm. You know, trying to compress everything into, um, 12, 16 weeks, it's just going to be busy in our industry, which could be very good for us. There's probably going to be more work, but right. uh, le- less downtime. That's why I'm thinking we should take advantage of the downtime right now and oh, just work good. on stuff and just being ready, right? Yes. And I and I know that for some of us, like I have the opportunity um, to do some work from home now as opposed to traveling, but as a speaker and a leadership trainer and developer, et cetera, is that I usually go into companies and do training, or I have my executive coaching clients, um, for, um, you know, some fortune 100, 200, 300, 500 companies. And I go in and work with their executives, but right now everybody's in mental crisis mode. Um, so the bigger trainings, which is where the bulk of my income comes from, are like, no, why? Because the gathering of people. And so now as everybody pivots to how can we do it um, virtually, which I have the capacity to do that, but it's the time it takes <laughs> for that yeah. to get up where people are like, okay, it would be great to, you know, to kind of sit at home and, and plan and, and use this quality time. I've used it for creation, but some, and I think about when I say to that, is what's happening in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is shut down. I heard. For the next 30 days. I mean, like, yeah. Vegas is shut down. I mean, it's so, it's so, the magnitude of that is so overwhelming for me. Like, what? I was just there actually a few weeks ago and I'm sitting there, Las Vegas is shut down? The world, <laughs> this billion trillion, really? For 30 yeah. days? And so as an event, coordinator and planner um it's like it's a little bit different but now it's the people who now don't have and if they're not going to get paid some of them aren't going to get paid because some companies i'm just doing layoffs and i'm doing furloughs some said i'm going to pay you for 30 days i'm going to pay you during the shutdown and others said i'll pay you for two weeks yes it, yeah. it's troubling all yeah. over so yeah, we just have to adjust i know i'm I'm so glad. Aren't you so glad, Dina, about, you know, technology these days? We didn't yeah. have it 10, 20 years ago. I mean, we didn't have online learning. My daughter is home from high school, and they're going to roll out the um, online learning uh, module starting next week, I believe. They're off till May. Yeah. Oh, wow. They're off till May. Yes. But, you know, I was just thinking, um, like, 20, 30 years ago, whatever, when most of us were still in school, <laughs> we didn't have these capabilities, but now we have them. Yes. And that's the, that's the beauty of technology. That's the beauty of shifting the way um, that we work. And when I think about, like you said, your younger self, think about your younger self. How would your young, the younger you have handled this situation? What have you learned in the interim that helps you navigate through this, walk through this better than you would have when you were younger, even 20, you know, years or so ago? I know. I was just thinking about that the other day. And um, I would, you know, 
I would tell my younger self to just take my time. I, when I was younger, I was always gunning for the next promotion. You know, I was, um, Oprah called it something else. She said, most of us have destination addiction. And I think I had that growing up. Like always, I was always thinking about what's next. What's after high school? What's after college? What's after mm-hmm. grad school? So instead of savoring the moment and just enjoying what I have right now, I was always in a rush. I'm still in a rush, but I think <laughs> I've learned, to, right? I, it's just the overachiever in me. I've just learned to chill a little bit more. And um, what's happening right now around the world is a great lesson in just pausing, just hitting the pause button, which... I never imagined I would do in my younger years. Mm. I would worry less too. I, I know I was raised in a family of uh, worriers. <laughs> like, oh no, what's gonna happen? Um, you're gonna play sports. What if you sprain your ankle? You know, but there's danger everywhere. That's what I would tell my grandma. Mm. And hitting the pause is critical. Yes, but something you said just really resonated with me is that taking a deeper look at how you're using and how you're seeing the time, what you can do, and I know it's very difficult when you in the midst of panic because you can't even think. I mean, I'm talking about neurologically, you can't think when you're yeah in a- yeah. And I'm like, not just using verbiage. It's science. You can't think. <laughs> right. Yes. And so taking that pause to say, what can I do with this time? How can I? And I understand that financially, people are like, well, financially, this is the situation. So, and, and here's some options and some opportunities to take a look at your financial budget. And I know as an event planner, you probably deal with people in their budgets all the time. Right. right. <laughs> Is that if you look at your budget, how have you been spending money? People always say, you know, you should have, not people, but financial planners tell you, you should have 30, 60, 90 days of emergency funding. You should have space on your credit cards. This is what credit cards are actually supposed to be used for. Right. It's emergency. <laughs> and then, you know, you have that balance. But okay, thank you for that. Wonderful, but I don't. Now what? <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Too late. So, too bad. I, I here's the thing. I don't have that. So one of the things that I did because I I got into that more. I got oh my goodness, this is kind of canceled. This is being moved around. I have my own events that are coming up, and money's due. Deposits are due. And, and people are going to need to register and some people are concerned about, will I have, or, you know, the money, you know, even if they do have it right now, the uncertainty yes. is the big issue. <laughs> so I said, okay, what could I do? How, what could I build? And then if I need money, what could I sell right now that I actually have? Here's a That's good, a good point. opportunity to go through. And if you have certain clothes or things, you have things like Poshmark. Why? Because people are at home. So that the people are now at home. Here's a great time to um, hold a webinar. And there's free resources out there. So I don't have the money. There's free resources to do that. I um, posted on social media um, because I'm doing a new, uh, launching a new program and I'm still doing the tweaks of it. But I thought, what well, is a great way to capture data and, and add value? So I said, hey, is anybody interested in doing a writing mm-hmm. masterclass? Because I get a lot of individuals asking me about, you know, I, I want to write my book. I want to tell my story. I need help, you know, with this content. I need help developing this program. And I have clients that pay me to do that. And then I have people who are always asking me, but without payment. And um, unfortunately, unless you're a client, <laughs> I'm not going to put those things right. out there to that level. And I said, but here's a great opportunity now to do some add value and do market research. So I said, Hey, who's interested in this class? And yes. I had people go, I would love to do this. So I put a pause and some things I was working on and said, let me do an intro version 
of my bigger program and see and and again help people make move some needles <laughs> and do what I love takes my mind off of oh my gosh am I and <laughs> I had a great response to, I would love this. I need this. I'm working on this. I had, you know, I said, fantastic. Held the first class last night and it was wonderful. And those that showed up, it's like, oh my goodness, I learned so much. <laughs> I got two new testimonials yes. <laughs> about a program before I launch it. You know what I mean? It's like beta testing. Yes. And they were like, this is what I can do. So take what your gifts and talents are really is what I'm boiling it back to. What are your gifts and talents? This is a great opportunity for you to be at home right now. Yes. Think about I, that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, Dina. No, 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 no. Then perfect. <laughs> I was, that was, I was pivot back to you. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm blown away by all the kindness and all the offers of help during these times. Um, like you said, it's the perfect time to just um, buckle down and reassess and pivot, you know, the, your previous offerings that may not work right now because we're working from home, but offer more online stuff and more um, like, you know, in my business, obviously, I have to be um, on site at events, but I'm taking this time to do more research, look for more volunteer groups, do more outreach. And uh, just stay connected with my people, with the uh, mm -hmm. with the people who help us with uh, the events. It's um it's not the time to disappear. I mean, it's just a quick email, ask how they're doing, and you know, reassure them. I think that's what people are at, are looking for at these times. Uh, reassurance, like what you said, people don't want to spend, but they want to be reassured that your event is pushing through, or that you're gonna work with them once it. Uh, back are you you know either going to give a discount or you're going to honor their tickets well beyond their validity yes so i have all looking for comfort right we're always so that's why i said so as i'm building up and sharing about what's coming up i'm also getting insight into how do i also serve better yes. and what are the um since my events are designed for um women and, and knowing how to support them and really living the life of their dreams and being able to say, okay, how do you keep moving? How do you make this yes. shift? Like I speak in your life, because this is a great opportunity. It's not hopeless. There's, there is a way. And if you need to make money, there's multiple ways to do that. That may be different than the way you earn right now. Right. And all those things we put off, like, oh, checking out that webinar before or that new technology like this podcast and um, all these apps that before we didn't have time to explore, I think now's oh, the time, yeah. right? I'm doing some <laughs> I'm going back, reading some books, beefing up on your knowledge. Yes. But more importantly, being present. Right. Has been huge. And, and being present for me. And I know that as women, we initially like to go look at how are our kids, our family, our spot, you know, we go outside of ourselves. Yes. But what this gave me on another level on this journey I'm working on is how to sit quietly with me and really get very clear about. It's hard what for, us, it for some of us to do, right? <laughs> Yes. It's like, it's, it's, you think that it would be easy, but it, it, it's not. And I, I had about you, but I can't sit still sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> do you take a walk? Do you like to walk? When that happens? I do. do, you, do you yeah. Can't? I walk my dog. I hike. But sometimes when I'm in front of my computer, I just can't sit still. I'm like, okay, I'm going to finish this blog post. But then after that, I'm doing some research and then I'm picking up the phone and I'm answering an email. So sometimes I have to turn on a timer. It's just being, yes, like you said. That's perfect. Like, oh, that's right? perfect. Yeah, like being still, listening to yourself more, and just not hurrying up because you don't have to be somewhere. That is so, when you said being still, that monkey brain. <laughs> <laughs> that monkey so brain. Used to juggling, right? You're so used to juggling. And one thing that I worked on that... <laughs> And I'm launching as part of this the new series with the leadership movement um, rollout 
is that I commissioned the sound and the music for my new guided meditation. Okay. To deal with that in their 20 minute guided meditations. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. <laughs> I have to check that out. I don't think I've ever meditated. Again, another thing to add to our list right? these days, right? Right. And and start. So how do you, without, you know, right now people are full of anxiety, full of yeah. fear, full of, you know, depression, questioning, negative self-talk. And meditation is definitely a tool to use, but also really practicing mindfulness. And being aware, aware of right now. So it's literally telling yourself that I'm not going to focus on next week. I'm not even going to focus on tomorrow. I'm going to sit into right now. And I'm glad you said you use a timer. So when we look at the Pomodoro effect, um, Pomodoro <laughs> principle, you there for 20 minutes and commit to doing that one thing. Mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed at how much you get done, how much focus that you have and, and all those other things and that um, flowing through. So if you're trying to do an activity that works, but also when you're doing meditation and if you're new to meditation, I challenge you to shift the way that you see and visualize meditation. You don't have to be sitting in the middle of a rug on the beach with your legs crossed. Um, <laughs> doing that. And there's there's nothing wrong with that because I'm not speaking next, but I'm saying start where you're at. And so when right. I first started to meditate, because it was very difficult for me, like you said, I was like, I start and I'm like, have I been doing this for an hour? It was like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I was like, what in the world? So right? I started with laying in my bed and being in a state of awareness. Okay. And when thoughts came, I shiftedly said, I see you, let's move. And I just told it to move out of the way. <laughs> and I just kind of did a physical swatting of the idea, like, I'll come back, you know. And okay. I did guided yes. meditation to begin okay. with. And so yeah, I have that to voice, check that out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, had my voice in the ear saying, okay, lean back, sit down. And, be, and it was very relaxing. And to the point where it helped me go to sleep, it helped me kind of you know, wake up and help me do a lot of um, various things. So start where you're at with whatever it is during this time, with whatever it is that you're working with, how you're, how you're lean in to the people in your network, lean into your family. If you're feeling a certain way, and especially if you have high anxiety about what's next, I have a high school senior. My son is graduating in June. Oh, wow. And Again, they're off officially the announcement um, for Irvine Unified School District until April 6th, which would have been the end of their spring break. Yes. And um, so they're off. I did have to cancel his college visit to go check out the school he's attending. You know, we've right. had to change a lot of in those pieces. And initially, I wanted to get kind of like, oh, my goodness, what about this? And I honored that. And so I time my breakdowns. <laughs> I know that sounds yeah, strange. but I give myself. I said, "You have five minutes, girl, to lose it." <laughs> so I put five minutes on my timer, and I think however I want during those five minutes. Yes. And then after that, I have to become more, um, I have to respond instead of react. I have to yes. start to look at solutions, but I do honor the fact that right now I want to. Yeah. Funny. You said that my, um, my daughter just had a birthday, um, during this lockdown and, um, we, she had, you know, uh, she got together with a few friends and one of her friends was just saying, this is a bad time to be a high school senior. <laughs> So that sort of jogged my memory when you mentioned you have a senior because of all these stressful stuff that they have to prepare for. And now yep. they're suddenly off, right? Yeah. And, and he a, had to, a good he exercise. To the <laughs> right. We were taking another, I mean, he's taken the SAT before, but we were taking it again to see about improving the score. And so that was canceled. Mm -hmm. Um. He's a football player. Well, the football season is over, but he also yes. does track and the rest of the track season is canceled. Um, <laughs> so 
I love what you said about taking stock and and in our time, taking stock and what can we appreciate and and how can we spend more time doing things that um, we've been putting off, connecting even virtually. See, social and physical distancing doesn't mean you can't talk to people and interact with people. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. You to do it differently. We have all this technology at our fingertips. Imagine if this happened in the 80s. <laughs> what would oh we do, God. right? <laughs> it would have been, I remember when those rolling blackouts used to occur and people right. were like, oh my gosh, what was I going to do? And the street lights would go off and you have to say what you're doing. But, um, and trying to do this. And then I had a couple of my clients, my, um, they were like, oh my gosh, I was, you know, can't do this. And one particular amazing client um, that I have is a fashion designer. And so LA Fashion Week, of course, was canceled. <laughs> and oh. and a couple of those things. And, you know, I, I understand, but I find it really heartbreaking that many venues are not refunding money or they're keeping partial deposits. I and did have a conversation the- about that. Yeah, yeah. with a client. He, I, I heard that it has something to do with your insurance coverage too. Yes, I think but they're, they're you, trying to recruit their costs, so it depends on what kind of coverage, to, mm-hmm. right? But my point to that is that um, certain small business owners and entrepreneurs may not have that level of insurance. Correct. And so to lose five and ten or twenty thousand dollars is huge. Yes, I agree. And, and now for my experience, I was supposed to be in London in April. And so I shout out to the airlines who've been giving waivers and, you know, allowing you to cancel even on quote unquote non-refundable type tickets and stuff like that. And I bought travel insurance for my one, um, flight. And so, you know, I was, you know, good with that, but my Airbnb in London poo poo on you. And oh. I, I reached out to them a while back, actually, when things were first starting to get kickstarted. And I said, hey, I wanted to say, see, I still want to come, but if the travel restrictions are an issue, um, can I, you know, I need to cancel. And I wasn't saying that they had to give me 100% back. You right. know what I mean? Yes, they just worked like, with you. They were like, well, we can give you 50%. Okay. And I'm like, okay. I said, and then you should go check with your insurance. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to go anyway. Cause this is before it really got to this level. And when they now cancel flights. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um, I now can't get there. Mm-hmm. And now when you're in your window and now Airbnb, shout out to Airbnb who says, I we will work on your behalf to ask the um the Airbnb host to give you a hundred percent refund and we will, you know, support them on the other end of it. Reached out right. again. Okay. That host said, Nope, sorry. Airbnb is trying to work with people and I think they'll give you your service feedback, but I'm sorry, we can't offer any refunds. We oh, it's a strict that's too bad. I heard everyone's and been mostly good though with uh, this most, whole yeah, refund most thing. Most people have. Most mm-hmm. people have. Guess who's giving this group a horrible review? I am. <laughs> who, and here's my thing. I they go well. You can we can reschedule if you want to give us another date. Well, unfortunately, with everything shifting, right? And It'll this is not, to get away. It's not next week. It's yeah. not down the street. I can't tell you that I'm coming in August, that I'm coming in September. I would like to, but I don't know that right now because uh, now my events that are happening now are moving yes. to the so fall. Much, um, so much uncertainty. So much uncertainty. And if they would have said, we will give you a credit and hold the credit, and then you have a year to use it. Yes. I okay. But to say no, you need to tell us your dates, and then we can get <laughs> the dates. I know. Everyone's just adjusting differently, I guess. 
you know. Right. But I, I thought yeah. that, wow, what a what a way. And and I think that as moms, as business owners, as leaders and entrepreneurs, that these times um reminds me of a project I used to do with my students when I was in the classroom is that these are the worst of times and these are the best of times. Right. It brings out the best and worst in people <laughs> too, it brings right? The best and worst, but it's all on how you look at it. And I, my heart goes out to um, moms who are now having to work from home. Yes. And they have no childcare. Right. And you have all. to keep the kids entertained while trying to make and a living. Work. And, and then the ones that have to go to work and have kids at home and no child care and, and no other resource, you know, no yes. other resources. And so that in itself is, is a challenge. And, um, I, I just want to leave our listeners with during this time of great uncertainty, um, take a moment to reflect on what you can do. And so you're not so caught up in what you can't do. Yeah, good one. Um, And when you begin to roll the tape out, you then can be mindful and celebrate in the now, which really begins to create the pathway and pave the way for what's to come. Mm -hmm. And that part is where I'm sitting on. And when the little monkey brain starts to come and ask me and, and talk to me and I say, oh, okay, but right now, here's what's in front of me. What yeah. advice do you have? Before we, what, how do you work through this? How are you working through this? And what advice could you give? What piece of final advice could you give our listeners to help them process through this? Um, I think my biggest takeaway from this um crisis or this um, unexpected event is just preparation. Um, Like we said, money, um, putting more away, um, having backup income streams, um, not just relying on one source of income. And also now with all our um, downtime and being familiar with all this new technology, we can better um, face challenges in the future, like a slowdown like this. Now that with, I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to get any worse, right? Maybe an earthquake, something similar. But yeah, we'll be more prepared. There was an earthquake the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't feel that. <laughs> it was in Northern Cal and um, Utah. Oh, okay. and, yeah. um, and there was. And then when I was looking at the news, um, you have the locusts swarming in Kenya. I didn't and, see that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have this disease, you have currencies, stock markets crashing right. and believers and people of faith, they say, wow, this seems like the end of times. Yeah. And what about looking at it to be the beautiful beginnings? Right. The time that I start to be more conscious about how I spend my time, how I spend my money, how I serve people yeah. with my kids. Yeah. It's all in yes. the lens of you look at it. <laughs> right. And and just taking stock, you know, like before this all happened, right? All the things that took up our time and money that weren't important. Right. Absolutely. I, I was telling my daughter, what's important is we're not together. We're, we're together. You're not stuck, you know, on a semester abroad and you can back, get back home. We're together. We're safe. We have a roof over our heads. We can work. You can learn. And and here's the thing that some people did. I had people that had to cancel their foreign trips and come back early. I have one great friend who him and his wife, they work in separate countries. One's in the United States right now. One's over in Germany. And so he was planning his spring break, spending his time taking his trip to see his family. And he can't go. And when I say he can't go is because if he goes with the current restrictions, he may not be able to come back for 30 yes. days or 60 days. Correct. Which is why I decided, okay, well, I'm not going to go to London, even though I can still, you know, just still go, oh. I can go back. Yeah. Good decision. 
I you would know? stay put too. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. So I said, okay, no foreign travel for me right now that I can't get back, you know, and yeah. back, you can always do that next time. I can always do it next time. And I was going, cause I was speaking at a conference and, um, that conference got shifted and canceled. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, you know, Oh, well, you know, <laughs> there'll be more yeah. opportunities and oh, oh, definitely more opportunities. And that's why I actually opened up and, and how I got connected to you. I said, well, I have more time to do more conscious conversations. So let me open up my calendar because I'm not traveling I and I can actually create more content while I do have the time right. and the content I'm creating now literally will stretch for the next six months. Wow. Good for you. I was trying to write two the other day and I finished three blog posts. Oh, the wow. Words, the words were just flowing something I've never been able to do before. Cause I was all these distractions and constant interruptions. Mm-hmm. Yes. So it, yeah. it's a great, it's a great time for focus. And, you know, thanks for pointing that out, Dina. <laughs> thank you. No, like I said, like, thank you for just um, saying yes and, and coming and sharing your perspectives and, and <laughs> your, you know, your films, how you're, how you're dealing with this. And I had um, one individual who canceled their call um, and my heart goes out and my prayers stay with them because they are impacted by what's happening in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. And they can't even wrap their minds about what they want to share, how to share and to be able to do what they, you know. Yeah. What they do. So, um, and, and by sharing today, our frame and encouraging you to take another look if you are feeling a certain kind of way, you know, depressed or fearful and um, or stressed out to do some things, it is the goal of Walking Through Glass, the podcast, to help you navigate that by sharing ways that others are processing and walking through it. By no way, shape or form is it to discredit any way that you might be handling it. It's to, to give you that hope. And I tell people, do you know what failure is? Failure is the absence of hope. So as long as you have hope, as long as you have hope, then you definitely will win. As long as you have hope, because there's always another opportunity that's sitting on the other side. Yeah. Thank you for that. (laughs) That gives me a lot of hope, you know. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for listening and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Walking Through Glass. And I want to leave you with this piece. Know that you have the power and the authority to transform your situation. So get clear about what you really want, which will lead you to being confident about who you are called to be and allow you to stay consistent on how you are called to serve. And I appreciate you listening. And if anything in this particular episode resonates with you, I invite you to share Walking Through Glass, the podcast with your friends and family. Walking Through Glass, the podcast is available on iTunes, Google Music Play, Spotify, Stitcher, and our platform host, Podbean. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Mira, thank you for being a fantastic guest. And um, thank you, Dina. I hope yeah. we get to have this uh, similar conversation in the future. Absolutely. We'll have to have you back on. And so <laughs> thank you so much. Through the glass. I really appreciate it. Real talk. Real talk.